But just take a look at how cute that little monkey is. Oh my gosh, guys, welcome to the vlog. I am actually really proud of myself for being able to pick up a scorpion right by myself. Much like I did with tarantulas. When I first started handling tarantulas, I would have to have someone else take the tarantula out of the cage, and then I could hold it. Well, the same thing happened with scorpions. I could hold this animal, but I could never go in and actually take it out of his cage. Because it just freaked me out. I'm like, it's gonna sting me, or it's gonna pinch me. I don't know what to do. Well, I've finally gotten over that fear, and I take this little beautiful monkey out all the time, and I absolutely love it. And oh, by the way, I hope the start of your day is absolutely amazing. What do you say we do a rapid fire snake thing really quick, starting with this creamsicle corn. Now the creamsicle corns were actually a hybrid between an emery rat and a corn snake way back in the day. And of course then once they bred them into albino, emery influence actually went from red to a more orangish color, hence the name creamsicle. Mandarin rat snakes, oh my gosh. What a beautiful naturally occurring snake. One of the prettiest naturally occurring snakes in my opinion. This particular one is from the Szechuan region. Para Humera mountain king snakes or no Black eye are a pyro milana that are just absolutely gorgeous. Now we have the Arizona Mountain King snakes as well that I'll show you guys in a minute, but oh my god, these things are stunning. And then here's the example of an Arizona Mountain King snake, but this one happens to be a hypomelanistic version, meaning that it's lacking some of the black. So usually that kind of brownish band is typically solid black, but you can certainly see the difference between the no black eye and what these would be called wooden eye, the Arizona Mountain Kings. And then we also work with the albino Arizona Mountain Kings too. Who doggy? These things are incredible. And we actually worked with the very first albino Arizona mountain king. Gosh, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago. You guys know I work with a lot of scaleless Texas rat snakes. Well, this happens to be what they would call a snow Texas rat snake, which is an aneurythristic and albino combination. So this is a double recessive, really amazing snakes. And I think that we were the first ones to produce the snows. At least I had never seen them when we produced our very first ones, and we work with them ever since. And another Texas rat snake is right here, which would be the pink-eyed leucistic Texas rat snakes. Now, most of the leucistic Texas rat snakes have black or kind of a bluish eye, but this guy has pink eyes. That just kind of popped out of nowhere probably 20 years ago from a regular leucistic Texas rat snake breeding. And ever since we've kind of kept a handful of them around, but you don't see very many of them these days, so it's pretty cool that we're going to be producing them again this year. I absolutely adore Honduran milk snakes. This would actually be a hypo tricolor, which is really cool because a lot of the hypos you see don't have the yellow banding, so the tricolors are pretty cool. Then, hoo <laughs> doggy, take a look at this one. Them right here. Again, this is a tangerine albino Honduran milk snake. This mama is going to make some beautiful babies. I've talked about these guys in the past a lot because I think they're so absolutely breathtaking. These are T-positive albino Nelson's milk snakes right here. And when you breed these to a normal albino, half the babies come out T-positive. So when they're half, this kind of mustard yellow color here is actually purple and stunning. And this one right here is what they would call a bullseye albino Nelson's milk snake. Just because the bands look more like bullseye than the normal triad. This is a blaze blotch king or an Apalachicola county king snake. Now when these are born they are literally like almost bright red and unbelievable but as they get older it kind of turns to a more yellowish orange. Nevertheless super cool little snakes. And speaking of super cool little snakes these Theri or Nuevo Leonis milk snakes are absolutely incredible too. Sometimes they're called variable kings because they are so variable. This animal could literally produce four or five different colored animals that would even look like the same. I mean, from what they call buckskin to melanistic to milk snake face to all kinds of different ones. They're really cool, and that's certainly why they call them variable king. I love this particular snake. This is a lavender snow cow king, and when these are hatched out, they literally are solid purple little snakes. We produced the very first lavender kings literally like 20 years ago, and basically what it is is a double recessive mutation between a melanistic and a lavender albino banded. When you breed them together, you get double heads, you raise them up, and then one in 16 babies come out lavender or albino. Because this is a lavender, we're going to be breeding it to other lavenders who get 100% lavender albino. Unbelievable. Might as well stick with cow kings for the minute. This is actually a high white albino California king snake that is just polygenic, bred for the highest white year after year. I tell you what, this thing is as white as it gets. It's definitely a great example and should be a really good male for us this year. I love garter snakes. It was really my first love of snakes. You know, when I was a kid, I was out in the woods catching garter snakes all summer long. So I have a bunch of really cool garter snakes like this albino checkered garter snake and they're live bearers so it won't be too long before we open up the cage and there's a bunch of little baby garter snakes in there 
That's one of the coolest things we do all year. And obviously, I'm just showing you rapid fire a bunch of colubrids that'll be breeding here starting next week. And I can't talk about colubrids without talking about Mexican black king snakes. Probably becoming one of the most popular colubrids out there. These guys are unbelievably sought after at the moment. And we have a really nice group of them up to size this year. So we should even increase our production a little bit more than we did last year. And I have no doubt that people will be waiting in line to buy these beautiful snakes. There is probably no cuter snake than a hog nose snake. Of course, this is a western hog nose snake here. And we have a bunch of new stuff up to size. And we're raising a bunch of hog nose up too because we used to be really big into them. We haven't produced nearly as many of them over the last two or three years. So with any luck, we'll start to really produce some beautiful animals with these guys. But just take a look at how cute that little monkey is. The other day when we picked up Matilda, the Eldalber tortoise, I actually showed you a coral ghost corn in Jeff's basement, but the lighting wasn't really that great. So I wanted to show you what they look like here. I mean, they are absolutely stunning animals. Again, it's a ghost corn, but it's polygenically bred to have all of that beautiful pink color. This is a hypo jelly Brooks King right here. Really beautiful. The Brooks Kings are really cool because they get big, they eat like crazy, and they're really good production animals and they come in a bunch of different colors right now. So definitely a snake I'm gonna be really happy to be hatching out this year. And I won't bore you with every single snake. You're gonna see a lot more over the next few months for sure. And that rapid fire turned into a lot longer segment than I thought, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments which one you like the best. We brought Phoebe over to meet the new turtle. Phoebe. She loves Speedy and she loves Savvy, so he knew she'd love her, but she's so afraid. <laughs> They're afraid, afraid of each other. <laughs> oh my God, you're so silly. Look at this, I had mentioned the other day about the QR codes that Lori worked so hard on. So are you excited? This is the first time we're open with them. I know, I'm super excited. I've had a bunch of people test, kids test it. Everybody seems to really like it. So yeah, I'm really excited to see how it goes this weekend. Exactly, we got some signs up just kind of telling people what things are about. And then if you walk through, you can kind of see that they're on all of the cages now. So uh, again, this was kind of all about Lori. Lori did this, so I mentioned that we're always trying to kind of improve things. What's next? I have a list, I'm not gonna lie. Really? <laughs> There's always something coming up, so we'll see. Um, I've got animal sponsorships. People really wanna start doing that, so we're working on the best way to do that. I know that we have to do like the Oh, all the plants okay. up top here, just some cosmetic stuff and like that, but we're getting close. We definitely want to have a place up front a little bit more for, to put some more merch stuff because yes. the Bella stuff was doing really, really well. By the way, if you haven't got your Bellas, I'll put a link in the description. You definitely got to get your Bellas. We're going to do salt is coming yes. up next and then we want to do some other plushies, a whole bunch of other stuff, postcards, all kinds of stuff. So we're going to have to work on something up front over there for kind of that kind of gift shop area feel. I'm not 100% sure. And then of course, we've got to expand next door uh, and put all new cages next door too. What? Oh, I didn't tell her about that yet. I'm not sure that I'm not I'm not gonna say that's gonna happen, but <laughs> I do I do have this grand plan of a reptile cafe, the reptarium, and then make massages. That's my dream. It's the reptile complex. No. Yeah, I, I like it. The zoo is your dream. Reptile and here cafe, we are. the zoo, and snake massage. Let me know in the comments if you guys are excited. You gonna come visit? No, no. <laughs> so Eric actually brought a corn snake in for us to breed. Oh my gosh, this is Damn. awesome. That's a beautiful snake right there. That yeah. is a black motley corn snake. Oh, okay, yeah, right. I, I thought it was a charcoal motley. I really don't know that much about yeah, them, but you can the, really tell. Yeah, the charcoals will, won't have, you see that little bit of yellow on its neck? Yeah. The charcoals won't have any yellow on its neck, and they're gonna look a little bit more, almost like a ghost animal, as opposed oh, okay. to just a normal black or aneurthristic. So this is a double recessive mutation. Aneurthristic lacking the red, of course, but it will still have some yellow, and as it gets older, that yellow will come out even more and more in this right here. And of course that motley is that pattern right here. And they actually were producing, I mean, back in the late 90s and they called them motley mutant corn snakes, believe oh, it or not. Really? And then really? over the years they got shortened to motley. It's kind of interesting, just like cinnamon ball pythons used to be called cinnamon pastel, spiders used to be called oh. spider webs. You know, oh, a lot of animals no get started kidding. on one thing and then get shortened to something else. So this is a motley, absolutely gorgeous, looks really good, female. Definitely should get some good eggs and uh, produce some beautiful babies from her. Still working out all the bugs on the Bella camera right here, but I'm pretty excited to say that we now have music on the 24-7 Bella Cam, and I think she absolutely loves all of the attention. The truth is, I don't know that she even cares, although it was really weird. She typically spends all her time over here on this side of the cage. Right when we started the 24-hour cam, she was spending all kinds of time on that side of the cage. I don't know if I wasn't perceptive and she had been doing it before, or was there a chance that she somehow was sensing, like, I don't know, the EMF that the camera was giving off? I'm not 100% sure. I found it very interesting. Now that it's been a few days, 
she's going back to her old ways and pretty much spends all her time again on this side of the cage. Just some weird observation, I'm not sure. But anyways, if you're watching the 24 hour Bella Cam, you now have some music. We've been talking about it, and I think you need a new truck. Yeah, it is true, guys. I mean, I'm one of those guys that just doesn't want to spend money on vehicles. I mean, I kind of have this attitude like, if it gets me where I want to go, I don't need to. But it is about time. I mean, my truck's getting a little bit beat up. So probably yeah, this yeah. summer, I'll have to get something. What do you think I should get? Think about like one of them Abrams tanks. What? <laughs> Abrams tanks? That's, that's like that's idea. like a, that's like five million dollars. I, I you can't I even know. drive those. I saw like Arnold Schwarzenegger crack an egg on one before, and like you, did you can literally cook it. Did you guys know? Have you ever seen me that I drove one Abrams tanks? Yeah. I actually no had way. a buddy of mine out in California that allowed me to take an Abrams Adley oh, no. fighting vehicle or whatever it is. Oh, I took no. both of those out. I literally was alone you in an M1 Dude, Abrams. No, we couldn't ass. shoot them, but I got it to like 60 miles an hour. Now, I will say this, and I'm sure Dave is watching because he's a friend of mine. He always watches the vlog. Uh, he told me the only thing he said, don't slam on the brakes because have you ever seen those Abrams? They're yeah. like, they go like, oh, yeah. 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 And, and what did I do? I was going like 60 and I slammed on the brakes. Wow. <laughs> almost rolled that almost forward? No, it was super good, man. It was awesome. That was awesome. So, anyways, I'm not getting the tank, guys. But what that do you would have? be cool. You even have a 500 diesel dually. Diesel, dude. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. You'll I like, I like the, I like the environment too much I to was do just that. About to come say, on, yeah. now. It's come like on. Yeah. A you can't yeah, you buy can't a do that. Come on, man. H1. H1. Dude, I was looking at them. You can get them from oh NATO for about five grand. They're not street legal. Oh you gotta my. put a bunch of money into them. I've been thinking about it. All right, I'm Dude, done. A, I'm done talking to these guys. I, I mean, I try to have a conversation, and these guys are, they're impossible. They're impossible. <laughs> You're about to open up for the Reptarium. I'm actually gonna try to have a little bit of an early night tonight, because I wanna take Lori out to dinner. We haven't done that in months. So if it's not too busy tonight, I'm gonna probably butt out of here a little bit early. Like I mentioned, I'm gonna hang out here at the Reptarium for a little bit. It's just really cool. We got some people from Massachusetts that came in that are hanging on to Perdita here. It's, uh, it's pretty awesome. I mean, already a lot of people from all over the place. We had the actual tour earlier today from Arizona and these guys came all the way from Alabama to visit so I appreciate you guys so much what do you think of my girl here she's cool huh yeah. so and she's, she's so, so pretty sweet. yeah and she doesn't get nearly enough attention so I'm glad that you had a chance to take apartment. her out because she's yeah. super cool I'm from Marion Iowa uh, it was 10 hour drive here and we got here Wednesday oh my god and it was it was so much fun meeting you here at the Reptarium my man here came all the way from California to come visit I appreciate you very much, and you work with ball pythons now, right? Yes, I do. You have a Facebook page? Uh, no, I don't. Not the time. Anything else? No. Any other thing I can shout out? No. All right, just keep an eye out for this guy. You'll see him eventually. Where'd you guys come from? Indiana. Indiana. Southern Indiana. Indiana. Southern Indiana. Oh, How long we drive? Eight hours. Eight, eight hours. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my eight gosh. Hours. Well, you guys are awesome. Thank you for coming. I hope you had a good time. All right. <laughs> just a quick walk through. Got Night Fury out over here. Bella's getting the most attention over here, of course. Oh, we got some tarantulas going on over here. So uh, as always, having a good time. I hate to leave early because I'm having a great, great, great night. It's nice because it's a little bit slower, so I'm able to spend a lot of time. But uh, I'll, I'll hang around for a little while longer because I'm just having a blast. The little baby veil chameleons are doing absolutely incredible. What do you think of this little monkey? Uh, it's very nice and it's very cute and it changes colors all the time. As reluctantly as I want to, me and Lori are going to go out and grab some dinner. Actually, we were supposed to go out like an hour and a half ago, but it's just been so much fun here and a lot of kids and a lot of people in, so I just didn't want to leave. But finally, uh, I think there's about an hour before we close. We're going to go ahead and get out of here and grab some food and just have at least a little bit of the night off with Lori. So I'm back here and I'll be honest with you, originally I was thinking about filming our dinner out, but then I thought to myself, you know, Lori and myself used to go out to dinner almost every week. This isn't kind of a little bit of a date night. We haven't done it in months because we've been so busy. So I thought, you know, I'm just not going to do that. I'm just going to put my camera down and enjoy myself. And I absolutely did. With that said, I am back home and I've been trying to shorten the outro. So I'm just going to tell you guys that I really love you guys so much. And I'm going to tell you to be kind to someone. And I am going to tell you, I'll see you guys tomorrow.